RTA cabinets or ready to assemble cabinets. Let's talk a little bit about the cabinets really quickly. If we were to break it into three tiers that are well known in the industry, okay? Um, in the industry, if you're talking with my colleagues, there's stock, there's uh, semi-custom, and there's custom. Now, in my opinion, and, and uh, a lot of my colleagues <laughs> definitely agree with this, um, a lot of times some of these terms can be used as platitudes or, or um, become irrelevant, like the word custom can sometimes be completely misunderstood with what it really is doing for you, the end user, okay? Um, but let's talk about the basics. Stock cabinets mean that a manufacturer or a factory has made a cabinet, boxed it up, so to say, have it on the shelf, ready to sell just as it is, okay? Just like when you walk into one of the big box stores and there's something sitting on the, sh a cabinet sitting on the shelf, you buy exactly what you see. Okay. It's limited to what you see or to what is already built or manufactured. Okay. Semi-custom would be a cabinet that, <clears throat> excuse me, a factory would have built, um, already designed to a certain size and parameters, um, criteria or specifications. Um, but if, uh, but then when you, you go to order those cabinets, uh, you get to pick the door style, you get to pick the color, you know, the, the wood species or the material and the stain or the, or the paint finish, whatever the finish is on that material, the color, you pick those and then it's made to order. Okay. It's made for you at that time. Um, or, and, and also semi-custom is very well known for what we consider modifications in the industry. Meaning if I want that cabinet to be shorter or if I want it to be wider or taller or, you know, put features inside of it that um, were not a part of the original specifications, they'll charge for that, but it's semi-custom. One of the most, the best used category of cabinets that exists is semi-custom and it has so much flexibility because you're not paying the premium of everything being made custom and you're, um, uh, but you get the, the flexibility of custom, but you're paying almost a little bit more of a stock pricing um, with all those variations. So for what it's worth, hopefully that makes some sense to you. Uh, and then on the, on the, the custom side, again, the word custom can sometimes be misused or misunderstood. Custom in, in, in my definition means that you're basically um, dealing with a, a shop where you're asking them to do just about anything that you want to have done. Maybe a custom door, maybe um, you're f finding a wood species that, they, um, that they're going and sourcing that they don't normally, you know, that a semi-custom company, they might say they have seven species of wood, but a custom shop, you might say, I want teak, and they go and find teak for you, okay? So with that being said, uh, and then of course you can build it to the sizes and specifications that you want, um, and of course you pay the, a premium for it. Most of the time, a semi-custom cabinet company can do a lot of what a custom cabinet company can do, but they may not be willing to go and source things that they don't normally offer um, in their lineup of, of, of product offerings, okay? So hopefully that didn't dissuade you from this conversation. I wanna jump into this, but what do you get when you buy RTA or ready-to-assemble cabinets? Now, by the way, there's some other terms. Flat pack, um, knockdown, or some other terms that the industry uses when talking about these cabinets. Now, just so that you're aware, in the United States, there's only a couple, I mean, at least that I'm aware of, two to three companies that build cabinets in an RTA method, meaning they may manufacture these in a facility, they take all the pieces and put them into a, a, a box, unassembled, ship it off to, um, you know, sometimes the end user, you, or to dealers um, who then, you know, um, assemble those and, and sell those to their clients. Um, in, however, most, by 90% of the RTA cabinets are manufactured um, overseas, uh, usually in the Asian um, countries um, like Indonesia, Vietnam, um, I think in Bangladesh, I think Mexico is now getting some facilities as well. Um, I wouldn't consider that overseas, but but where the labor's lower cost, that way they can be very competitive by the time they ship it overseas you know, warehouse that deal with all the waste and, and wear and tear and loss and still be able to be competitive, um, way competitive in the U.S. market, okay? Um, China actually had some tariffs a long time ago, you know, a few years ago that really hurt China being able to compete in that way, but there's other countries now that are doing the same thing, okay? Um, so let's talk about what you get with RTA or what you don't get, okay? So RTA cabinets. RTA, again, back to the stock cabinet, similar to stock, it's already built, right? It's already built to size, you know, whether it be 15 inches wide, 18 inches wide, 21, um, you know, 24 inch deep base cabinet, 34 and a half high. Um, it's built just to that. You, you, you have to deal with what you get. 
Um, you can um, sometimes modify the cabinet to be shallower. Sometimes a local shop might do that for you, or you might do it yourself if you're handy. Um, you can do whatever modifications you can, but you can't deal with the width or height of, of the cabinets. You can't change those without dealing with you know, the fact that your door um, you know, can't be stretched or cut um, to match that size. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the strengths. Um, it, for the US market where um, dovetail drawers has been strong, um, solid wood, you know, um, construction, full extension, undermount drawer guides, slow close. That's all very much a standard offering now in the RTA cabinets. Pretty nice, uh, kind of a ni nice um, strength to, to construction and durability and longevity. Um, plywood sides is very common now in the industry, okay? Um, because the plywood holds up better to wear and tear for shipping and, and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> The finishes, you know, you, you, these are, this is a painted white over the top of uh, HDF. Um, it, it, the finishes are getting better. Um, when they first came out in the industry almost 20 years ago, um, cabinets coming from, say, China, <coughs> excuse me, they, they, their finishes were not very good quality. Um, I'll tell you a little trick I use, and I have not tested on this. But um, really good finishes, you can put a little bit of acetone on. I'll, I'll have to do a video of that, by the way, and, and demonstrate that, because that's really a, a compelling point about the quality of a cabinet finish. Not that people are using acetone in the kitchen all the time, um, but it demonstrates um, how durable the finish can be uh, to hold up. So that's just a little trick. Um, maybe watch for, vi for a video later where I demonstrate that, okay? Um, all right. so. Some of the things that you, you can't do um, with RTA cabinets. Well, if the product doesn't offer something, let's just take an example. Let's say that you have a, um, you want a floating vanity um, to a certain dimension and configuration, but they don't offer it. Well, though you could cut off toe kicks, and I've done it where I've cut off the top of the drawer fronts. Maybe I'll show a video on that sometime where I make a floating vanity out of a typical, um, you know, um, RTA cabinet. Um, it's, it, but it, but there are some limitations, right? If I cut those two off, I only have the height of that door to make that work. So I don't want to go into a lot of depth with that. I just want to explain that um, at that point you're stuck. You can't get it, right? So then you have to either you have to deal with another source or have something custom made. Okay. So um, so that's one limitation. You can't make something that the product doesn't have now. Some of these RTA companies will have like color matches. For instance, um, this might be a Sherwin Williams color. You can t go then find out what the color code is. Go to Sherwin Williams, get the paint, and maybe you can have something made and paint it to match, and maybe hopefully get the 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 door style or the details matched so that it looks like it's you know the exact same product. So those are just some factors to be aware of with RTA cabinets. Um, other than that, really, um, they're pretty well established in the U.S. now as far as warehouses and suppliers. So if I have a warranty issue, so let's say that the, um, the, the drawer front um, uh, has a gouge out of it when I pull it out of the box. That's really, really unusual, but let's say that's the case. Maybe a forklift hit the box. Um, you know, they'll, they'll warranty that and, and get you a replacement for that, and that's not usually much of a problem um, nowadays, and usually within a matter of a week or so. Okay. So other than that, whatever other questions you got about RTA, please send them below. We'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about the connections as I, I discuss custom cabinets as well, okay? All right, let's talk custom cabinets. Now, um, unlike RTA, if I want to have particle board sides in my cabinets because I want to go to a wood species that RTA doesn't offer. So again, if I, RTA, you're going to see really commonly in the wood species, you're going to see birch, okay? There are some companies now starting to incorporate some sort of white oak. I believe it's like um, an Asian white oak. I don't know that for sure, only because the price point isn't nearly what the price point of a uh, white oak would be here in the U.S. with a custom cabinet company. But nonetheless, um, you find very, very few variations in wood species. You get a lot of painted finishes and birch, okay? Asian birch, by the way. In custom cabinets, you know, I might be dealing with, like I kind of show my, my uh, door samples behind me here. Um, I, there's up to probably, gosh, there's probably 30 wood species that are, that are um, readily used for cabinets. You know, about seven of those are commonly used or regularly used. Um, you know, you, you have your typical oak, maple, cherry, hickory, walnut, um, white oak, red oak, um, you know, even some red birch, bamboo, um, teak, 
Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. But, and then there's some that are really, really, really unusual that you, you hardly ever see, but they are available um, to do in, in, uh, in custom cabinets. And you pay for it as well, by the way. <laughs> so custom cabinets, what do you get? Well, if I want to take a, a cabinet, and I can do this with custom or semi-custom, as, as the term may be. And let's say I have a cabinet that, that is, um, I need to do a, uh, let's say a butler's um, pantry um, for like a buffet in a, in a walk-through pantry behind a beautiful kitchen. And I, but I don't have a lot of space in that walk-through galley area for that butler's pantry. So now instead of having 24 inch base cabinets, maybe I need those cabinets to be um, 19 inches deep, okay? I cannot do that with an RTA cabinet, okay? There's a certain point in my RTA cabinet where, um, oops, <laughs> my drawer guides, I can't, oh, I can't show you very well here, but my drawer guides um, will, I cannot cut my drawer guides down anymore. Now I could go and get replacement drawer guides or have a shop do that and still use the same carcass, cut it down, use shorter drawer guides, um, but it's, you start to add some expense there that, that um, adds up pretty quick and you're still paying for the original stuff that comes in the box, right? Um, but so just again, I can get this, maybe I need it to be 18 and a half inches or you know, 19 and a quarter inches deep just to match exactly my design in the space. Um, no problem in semi-custom and certainly no problem in custom, okay? Um, the other things, I'll just show you some, some, um, some examples. Um, if you want finished ends that are flush, um, you know, say it's flush with the face frame, sanded and stained to match the face frame, you can do that with custom cabinets. Sorry, this cabinet's got some wear and tear on it as I've used it plenty for examples to demonstrate and explain cabinets <laughs> with, with people. Um, but you cannot do that with RTA cabinets. You know, you simply don't have the, the option to do that at the factory. Whereas here, you can have the factory, you know, stain, you know, sand stain finish so it's just flush on, on the full side of the cabinet. So beautiful furniture looking end, okay? Um, the other things you can do with custom cabinets, you know, if you want to do a custom stain, okay, let's say that, or paint, paint's a better example because stain is a little bit more of a fiasco, but, but you can still do it. But a lot of times with semi-custom or custom cabinet companies, you can um, get an example. Let's say that you have, you've stained a piece of wood that you, that you want to use, uh, created your own stain, or you painted something and mixed up some paint for that matter, and you've uh, painted something custom and now you want them to match that for the cabinets because you use that for your grandmother's hutch in your dining room. You can send that paint swatch or sample from that cabinet off to the factory, stain or paint, have them do a color match for you, have that done. Now, let me be clear about this. <clears throat> you can do that with RTA, by the way. There's one problem with that. <laughs> the only way that most of those factories will do that with you from overseas is if you order a container, which is about 750 cabinets, okay? Oh, you can do just one kitchen or one bathroom or one cabinet for that matter in semi-custom or custom. The other thing with RTA cabinet companies, you're gonna wait for 90 to 120 days or more for that to come across the water on barges before you can get it. With your semi-custom cabinet companies, you're dealing with usually a lead time of about six to eight weeks. On custom cabinets, maybe eight to 10 weeks. It all depends on, on the, the busyness of the factory or the, the shop that you're dealing with, okay? So custom finishes, custom sizes. Now, there are options once in a while to get custom doors. Even though you see I've got a big array of door samples here behind me, um, you can get custom doors made by custom shops. You'll usually pay, that's where the numbers really jump through the roof because the most expensive part of your cabinet is the door, drawer fronts and the doors, okay? That's about two thirds of the cost of the entire cabinet, okay? Now, once you put accessories in, all that adds up and, and offsets that a little bit, but for a genuine, typical cabinet with shelves, you know, um, and, and the box um, and the doors and drawer fronts, the most expensive part is the, is the drawer fronts and doors, okay? So that's basically the difference between custom and RTA cabinets. Okay, let's talk about my special treat or resource for you. So um, I have, uh, I ran into a few years ago, there's, uh, and I just forgot the website, so I don't wanna miss say it, I'm just, I'll put it in the, uh, in the description and, and a link as well. There is a company, it's actually, I believe it's a dealer. I think that they're um, in the Eastern US. 
that um, does a, a grading system on a lot of manufacturers. I think it's close to 100 in the U.S. Now, even though there's probably 10,000 sources in the U.S., this just barely touches the, you know, the tip um, of all the options available. But they go through and they rate the, um, the quality, the, the, the price, and the value of um, cabinet companies. But it's not just custom. It's not just semi-custom. It, it's also RTA as well. It is not comprehensive. It doesn't include everybody. But it does include some of the biggest players in the space. So I'm going to include that link for you. I hope you like it. Again, my plea, if you like what I'm doing in the content, if you like my delivering information, will you please subscribe um, and maybe share this with somebody else who could use this and watch more videos.